everyone. Just a quick, quick note before we get stuck into today's video. You may already know what's coming from the title of the video, but I did just want to hop in and apologise for the state of my footage. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what happened, but, um, well, I do. It was my webcam. Um, my footage is extremely blurry, so for that, my apologies, but my guest's footage is absolutely perfect so hopefully that will make up for my blurry face but the conversation that I had with my guest was absolutely wonderful so I'm really excited for you to see this video and I'm really excited for you to be introduced to my guest if you haven't already found her which I am sure the majority of you will have she is wonderful and I'm super super excited for you to be introduced to her and also please check out her channel. I will have everything linked below because on her channel, earlier this week, she released our first conversation. So she has the video of our first conversation on her YouTube channel that was released, I think on Tuesday. So please go and check that out. I will do my best to add it in a card, but I cannot guarantee that I can do that because I'm not entirely sure if I can do that to external videos. But we shall see what happens. Anyway, I'm super excited for you to see this video. So I think you're going to like it. Let's get stuck in. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to my channel or welcome. If you're new here, a very, very warm welcome to you. My name's Emily and I am a knitter, crocheter and very occasional sewer. Today's episode is a really, really special one. I have an absolutely wonderful guest with me today. So grab yourself a beverage and we'll get stuck in. So I'm going to introduce my wonderful guest. Hang on. Oh. It's the wonderful Anne from Toby Knits. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Really good. Really good. It's... um. Good. Still snowing, out-ish, kind of, but we have a sunny sky. So, you know, oh, actually, yesterday, I know, it's weird. Yesterday was the first time we uh, I saw a blue sky for about a week and a half. I was so, you know, you feel like you're just under a heaviness, you know? Yes, yes, very. Um, I suffer with SAD, so this uh, time of year isn't great, although I love this time of year. <laughs> I know. So it actually is nice and sunny out today. We did get a lot of snow uh, the other night, but uh, you know, but and and it was so weird because our snow had almost melted, which is super early for us. We don't norm that we normally have snow from the end of December until March, the end of March. Just doesn't go away. It just keeps piling up and piling up. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, and then. Um, we actually it all started thawing last week, and I was like, "God, this is a bit weird." Like, not enough that we could see grass, but it, enough that it leveled at like the seven, eight inches of snow down to half an inch, kind of thing. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and then of course it snowed yesterday. So, oh, we've not had any snow. Well, we haven't where we are. My sister up in Derby, she had snow, um, but yeah, we've not had any. I'm quite disappointed. Oh, you can have some of mine. I'd love some. <laughs> Send it over. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Oh. So what are you working on? Well, today I'm working on my, um, this is the shawl I'm doing in the Linda Simpson Disley Sister Designs shawl along thing that she's doing. So yeah, the, hard to see where my camera is there. So this is called the Do Not Disturb shawl and you start at the bottom. You include, yeah. it includes the pico edges, whatever, as you're going. So it's not something you add on after. And you just keep increasing. One side is all, what they call that? I-cord? I-cord binding, yeah. yeah. Edge. And then the other is the, the pico edge. And it goes all the way up until um, you reach halfway through your ball. This rings a bell. Was it part of um, Martin of Knit 365? Yes. yes, I did the crochet was, version. And this was Ooh. the one knit um, yeah. 
uh, when I did it with Martin's um, Knit365 video. Um, and I just love it. It's a nice size. It's very easy to wear. Oh, and big. It's, it's oh, just, no, wrong one. Hang on. <laughs> there it's go. just really oh. nice. And then oh, once you get through half of the ball of your yarn, then you just decrease down that one side while still doing the picos. But it's, yeah. it's it's a really nice pattern. The lady is called Louise Tilbrook. Yes. And it's a super, again, I don't need the pattern anymore because it's just so easy to remember what you're doing. The beginning part, where I think there's about 21 rows or maybe not even that many that are your setup. Once you've got past the setup, hmm. Super easy, you don't need it. But <clears throat> my grandson, Tristan, who is going to be four in April, loves my scarf. And every time I have it on, he tries to, to take it off me and uh, wear it. Sometimes on his head, sometimes around his neck, sometimes um, on his sister, like he'll tie her up with it. Anyway, he loved it so much that I told him I'd make him one, but he told me, Nana, has to be Gein. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because oh. Gein is his favorite color. So I dyed this ball of yarn up oh. uh, in, into green with all, it's got all, and I made it up myself. Like I didn't use, like I have emerald, cause I use acid dyes, um, Jacquard acid dyes for my, like this is hand dyed. This was winter walk. And um, and I use acid dyes, so I had um, emerald, and I think I've got a, a very pale green or something. I, I can't remember, but I wanted to make my own color, so um, I just mixed yellow and blue like you would for primary colors or whatever to get the green, and then added a couple of specks of um, the emerald and a couple of specks of olive. And so this is how it's kind of uh, meeting up. So looks amazing. It's Gorgeous. cute. And it's great car knitting because like I don't drive. So um, I just, whenever we go anywhere, I just sit in the car and, and knit. And uh, it's and just easy to knit because I don't need, you know, I just count how many of these I've got to get. How many have I done? One, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, eleven, fifteen, sixteen. I'm on the seventeenth, and I'm going to nineteen before I start decreasing. Wow! And then where you do the increase, you do it a, a decrease all the way back down. So it's a really nice pattern, and I love it because it uses one skein of yarn. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you've given me a thought because I've got some skeins of yarn over there that aren't. They're quite unusual um, fiber content. So yes. I didn't really make socks with them. Yeah. And I was like, what can I make with them? But that's sure. Yeah. It's a yeah, really good idea. Is, it's really nice. It's called Do Not Disturb. And it's by mm. um, Louise Tilbrook. So but it's, it's a really quick, fast, easy shawl to make. And again, oh, like I said, you're using um, you're using um, one skein, which is great. Love that. Yeah, I did the crochet cool. version. Oh, did uh, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the reason I did the crochet version is because I mostly do knitting. Um, yeah. and I thought I'm going to do the crochet one because I'm going to challenge myself and do a garment that's crocheted because I've tried before and I just can't get the gauge right. Yeah, um, which is why I did that one and it was lovely, it was really, really nice. It was, I think she called it the Disturbia Shawl. Yes, that's right. Hannah Goff. Was it Hannah Goff? I feel like that's the name of the designer. I will add in the description below all the. Yeah. The patterns and stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's Hannah Goff. Yeah, I think you're. I think I think it was Hannah somebody. Yeah, yeah. I don't know her last. She did YouTube. She's got a YouTube channel, and um, she did little videos on how to do the bits and bobs, which was really handy for me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not the most confident when it comes to crochet. <laughs> yeah, I like crochet. I do. Um, I find with crochet, um, it it's quicker. So yes. like, oh my gosh, yeah. everybody got baby blankets when all my kids had had babies and all my nieces and nephews have had babies. They've all got a crochet blanket because I can oh. open it in like four days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
because it definitely goes quicker than knitting. Um, yeah. But I have to be careful when I crochet too much because sometimes it hurts my um, hand or my yeah, shoulder. I used to I used to use the straight crochet hooks, but then I had that trouble when I was doing a lot of the smaller amigurumis. Yeah. Um, so then I changed to ergonomic handle uh, oh. crochet hooks, and I haven't had a problem since. Yeah, that's yeah. I think mine are definitely a, a rounder. I don't know. Yeah, they're different. They're different from the old fashioned straights that my yeah, grandmother. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's something else. Because my grandmother, I, when I grew up in England, I was born in Liverpool, believe it or not, and uh, we lived there till I was ten. And we lived next door to my nan and two doors the other side of my nan was my mom's brother. So, and oh, his family. So we were always close and I would always go out of my, my house in the morning, have my breakfast, go out of my house, go next door to my nan's house because my grandfather had taken down the fence between us all. So it was just totally open. That's brilliant. And I would go into my, uh, granddad, my nan and granddad's house and my nan would say, have you had any breakfast? And I'd say, no, nana. Even though I had. And oh. so then I would, say, I would sit at the table with my granddad and we would eat breakfast together again. And my granddad um, used to, he had throat cancer. So he had a really growly, graspy voice. And um, he couldn't eat any hard things, but he loved um, cornflakes. So he would get a bowl of cornflakes and he would sit there and smash them with his in, while they were dry and he'd smash them all to pieces. And I'd help him because, you know, when you're only five or six, that's what you do, right? You break all your grandfather's cornflakes up for him. And then um, and then he would add his milk and then, you know, he would eat his cornflakes like that. And he would have a cup of tea and he would take the, tea, the saucer pour the tea into the saucer and give me the saucer oh so i would drink tea with my granddad from his oh, I love that. yeah so it my grandmother taught me to knit and taught me to crochet as oh, my wow. mom was left-handed and so my mom couldn't oh. and oh, so, wow. yeah so my mom my grandmother taught me and uh so when I first came to Canada, I had a hard time with crochet because the terms are different. Oh my gosh, of course, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are they talking about when it came to patterns? <laughs> like, it took me a just to figure it out. Oh, um, oh but yeah. I did, I figured it out. But And of course, you know, back then too, I mean, there was no internet. There was no, no. you know, you had to just figure it out yourself you you couldn't go on ask google mm, we're very spoiled these days oh my goodness we the are. resources yeah although it was funny yesterday we were in the car uh me and, and bob and we were i forget where we were going and uh he uh we were just talking and all of a sudden the car the car said i'm sorry i didn't quite catch that <laughs> yes <laughs> and we were like Listen, Siri, we weren't talking to you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, uh, yeah, we have a Google Hub that sits just to my right. Yeah. And um, that whenever we have a conversation, sometimes it will pipe up and be like, I can't find that, but here's a suggestion. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's cute when you think they're listening. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. It's It's nice, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's handy. Yeah, too fun. easy. It is way too easy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, but that's all right. So yeah. yeah, my partner can control our amp from oh. wherever he is. So while I was recording a podcast the other day, he decided to turn the amp on because he couldn't get hold of me. I'd been really busy all day working, so I wasn't able to message him. And then I thought I need to record the podcast. <laughs> sat down and record it, but because he couldn't get hold of me, he thought I'm going to turn the amp on. She'll hear it and she'll message me back. But it was while I was recording. So I, was I, like, know, oh, actually, I actually remember watching that. <laughs> I do remember that. Technology. It's scary. Oh. Well, there's nothing better than when you're sitting in the living room and and uh, 
you know, you text your husband who's on the couch beside you. <laughs> How many times have you done that? <laughs> I think I only have a message then when I've been on the bike and I need a drink. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Forgotten to bring me my drink after yeah. the hour, and I text him at quarter past. I'm like, um, really parched up here. Can you get me a drink? Yeah. <laughs> but no, not on the sofa. I do not know how you do that bike riding business. Oh, I love it. I look at you when you get on that, and I think that looks really interesting. I think I could do that. But then the other day when you said it was an hour and 45 minutes, I thought, oh, dear God, 10 minutes would do it for me. I mean, that's the extreme because it was an event. So it's a seven, no, eight, eight event, event. So eight stage, that's what I was looking for. Eight stage event. And um, yeah, it's just different stages and you can choose the intensity of it. Yeah. And the one stage that I did, it took me uh, probably about three hours to do. But it was a the mountain that we go up. It's called the Alp de Zwift and it's modeled off the Alp de Huez from the Tour de France. OK, yeah. It's brutal. <laughs> it is really, really tough to get up. But it's I think it's that challenge that I really enjoy. Yeah. The actual feeling of being able to do that and accomplish something really tough is just, I quite like it. But as I say, that's the extreme. Um, yeah. you but can, of course, you can always just stop if rides. you wanted, right? Sorry? You could always just stop if you wanted. Though, oh, exactly. Right? Yeah. That's the beauty of being in the house because I can just hop off the bike and I'm fine. You know, I, I don't have to figure out how I'm going to get home because I'm already yeah. home. Or, or and when you've got the wobbly legs, you can just wobble over the <laughs> head. Yeah, exactly. Or try and come down the stairs. I'm like, nope, nope, not ready to come down the stairs yet. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Well, yeah. I had, um, I've had three surgeries on one of my knees <clears throat> over the years, which now has a partial knee replacement. And I got it really young. I was only 45 when they had to replace it. And they told me they'd probably have to give me a full at a later date, but we're not talking about that. It's it it doesn't hurt me at all, my knee anymore, which is the best part. Um, but I can't. I don't. I only have a ninety degree bend, right? In that knee, as opposed to a regular, which is one thirty. So it doesn't complete like it bends enough for me to sit in a chair, you know, and stuff like that. But I can't when I'm riding a bike. It won't rotate. Right. Ah, I see. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, mm. I have to lift my foot off the pedal and catch it. Oh, God. On the way down. Because I, it would, my knee just won't bend any, it won't bend enough. If I try to make it, I'll fall off the bike. Mm. Yeah. And um, so, what I, and it's, if I go downstairs, if the stairs are very steep, I can't get my leg off the previous step. So, oh. I have turn and go sideways down just because it just doesn't bend the whole way right and it, it's just like a brick wall it just won't go and but it doesn't hurt so I don't care um I'm going to live with it right and uh, so Bob and I went out in and we bought electric bikes in the summer oh so, yes because I love riding my bike but it just was too hard for me to do it and especially if you're trying to go up a hill and you you can't get your leg to it's just you, I kept falling off so yeah mm -hmm. uh, so we um we went and got electric but well so here's the story I bought an electric bike I wanted this electric bike because I had one years ago but it was I thought it was too big it had like 20 inch wheels I'm short I'm five foot right That's, yeah I'm not very big and I could never touch the ground with the bike uh... so, when I would stop, I'd have to get off the seat to stop. And then every time mm -hmm. you start, I'd have to pedal a bit and then sit on the seat. So I said to Bob, you know what? I'm fed up with that. I want a smaller wheeled bike that I can touch the ground. So I saw a really nice one that I liked. It had 14 inch wheels. Perfect. It was electric. You could, it had no gears. You could just pedal away and it would assist oh. you as you rode. And I thought that'd be perfect. And I could touch the ground. And I also figured because it was smaller, the circumference would be easier. Right. Yes, of course. So I'd be able to maybe keep my foot on the pedal 
an actual mm -hmm. title, right? So that was my thought. So I saw this one I really liked, and Bob looked at it and said, that looks like a clown bike. You're not having that. <laughs> so he ordered me this other bike that came, and I think it had, what size were the wheels? I feel like they might have been 20 inch. I don't remember. They were bigger wheels anyway. So it came and both the bikes that we got, we got ended up getting are foldable. So we can put them in the car and go for a ride somewhere. And then, you know, Amazing. So anyway, he got this bike, it came in and I looked at it and I said, I can't, I won't be able to touch the ground with that. And sure enough, I couldn't. And it was a very heavy bike too. It was quite heavy. So he said, okay, well then I'll keep it. I'll just order you the bike you want. So he did. And the bike came and I love it. And I can touch the oh. ground with still sitting on the seat. Oh, perfect. Which is my favorite part. And when I ride away, I just engage the throttle and ride away. And then I pick the, the, the pedals up. And I oh, that's so relaxing. So it is lovely. And then when I go up a hill, I just throttle up the hill. I don't even bother to pedal. I just let it do its thing. And oh. uh it's lovely. It's a really nice bike. So our plan is this summer, because of course it's all put away now because it's not much snow here. You can't do anything. Um, it's put away and we're going to go in the summer and drive the car to different areas and use their bike paths. That sounds amazing. Isn't that going to be good? But oh, not necessarily like good. yours where we're there for like at 40, an hour and 40 minutes. No, thank you. <laughs> Well, that'll be happening. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I do it to myself sometimes, but oh uh, man, I tell you, I see see what you're doing, and I'm like, it looks great, and I love the idea. Now, can you talk to other people like while you're writing? Yes, yeah. So it has like a chat box down the side, yeah. and then I have my phone, and it has an app. Um, it's called the Companion app, so it kind of talks to the. I say it talks to the software. So right. I have the software on my laptop and then have the app on my phone. The two talk to each other. And then as soon as I start a ride, the app pipes up and says, oh, here's the ride. So you get all your stats and everything on the phone, but you also get the chat. So you okay. can type in the chat and everything like that. Um, do you type in or do you just speak in? Type. Type. I wouldn't be able to speak. <laughs> oh, man, oh, maybe not, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you tried your little uh, bag you made? Not yet. No, I still haven't tried it. I, I know. So I know. Cool. I'm so pleased with it. It yeah. was uh, a bit of a bodge job on the handle, but it does exactly what I need it to do. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it looks good. I thought that I thought it was kind of a cool idea. And I was thinking, well, I wonder if I could make one of them for my bike. I could put my cell phone in it and, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's a great little pattern. Yeah, so I have to, have to have a look for that. Oh, yeah. I forgot how long it takes to sew because um, I don't do it that often. No. I just forget how long. And it took up most of the day. So I had all these grand plans, but half of them didn't get touched upon. No, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, but at least it's done now. That's the main thing. Yeah. Oh, dear. So what are you working on? I am working on... My sweet shop blanket still. Oh, there it is. That is so cool. So, is it kind of like a mitered square? Um, if I show you this one, actually, and how is it closer? Oh, so you kind of start at this corner, right? Yeah, and then you knit the color section, right? Um, and there's no, the decreases and increases are all along the edges. Okay. So I think for this one, I picked up the stitches along here. Right. You see that? Okay. I picked up the stitches yeah. along here and then increased. Oh, I'm going to drop a stitch. Hang on. <laughs> and then kind of increased and picked up the stitches that I cast on on this side, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I get it. And then change the color once you get to the right amount of stitches in the middle to yeah. the neutral you're not attaching um, that part to anything um right. no because i'm all i'm doing is picking up the stitches here oh, the and then ones. when i come to do the next square so say for example this one that's connected yeah. to oh, 
that would have been connected to this one. Is that right? Yeah. This one and this one. I picked up the stitches on either side of the white. Okay. It from there, if that makes any sense. So yeah. for this example, I'll be picking up those stitches along there and then knitting, filling in the space basically. Yeah, but you're only filling in the space or whatever with the one color. And then when you switch to the other color, you, you're you just... You mean, yes, yeah. that's kind of free, free yeah. dirt. Yeah, oh, that's it's really cool. good it's really pattern. And it's holding spring weight double, so it's basically... Oh, it is. It's even quicker. <laughs> Uh, now is that what the pattern calls for it um fingering weight yeah, pattern. Pattern, yeah. oh that's yeah. thin oh well, i like yeah, that but i imagine you can do it with dk but i think she designed it with advents in mind ah, because right. each square uses 10 grams of okay. color so right. oh, i keep holding this square up there we go so this part is 10 grams Right. And then this part is another 10 grams. So each square weighs 20 grams. But it just means that you can use the coloured set. You can use make two of the coloured section in a blanket if you were using a if you were using an advent. So you'd have um no not 84, 48. Is that right? If you double it, 48 squares. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not using an advent, so I'm making the giant blanket. Oh, that sounds great. Hey, did you see what I got in the mail yesterday? I was so excited because oh, I'm, I'm such a, um, a notepad person and, and a notebook and planner person. Like, I mean, this is my planner that I use every single day. It's the Daphne's Diary one. Oh, my gosh. But look what I got. Oh, that's gorgeous. Isn't it nice? Oh, my and, goodness. And you can it, each double page it's a double page so there's notes and then there's oh i'm gonna make you bigger hang on uh that one that one yeah so oh, wow and at the beginning it's got um the indexes so you can write in mm -hmm. so these are all my current works in progress now a bunch of them are like the mitered square blankets and all them and the jelly rolls they're just for forever and as you go right but oh yeah, yeah. and then, so then you can go to and add add all your notes in and, and that's some perfect. so what i wanted it for was because when i do the muscle bar which is what i'm working on now right yeah um, when i do all the i can write in how many rounds i've done and how many um um how many inches i've done and stuff like that right so that if i make a second one then i know i can go back to my notes and see because yeah you can put it in ravelry but do i put them in ravelry no i only add them to ravelry when i finish the project uh, oh you're better than me I, I have the intention of adding it to ravelry but i never do Mm -hmm. um, yeah and that sounds the, like a great the, idea because the same oh, with yeah. this like you know i did 19 for me 19 of these mm -hmm. picos before i started the decrease should i still do 19 for tristan because he's a little boy or should i do 17 oh oh a bit smaller for his you know but the kid, kids have big heads doesn't matter how blinking old they are, they still have big heads and necks, right? So Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of hoping we might see him so I could kind of try <laughs> half, <laughs> half of this round him to see. <laughs> oh poor Tristan. Oh my model. He's gonna love it. I know. My model. Oh, my anyway, I got that yesterday and I was super excited. So last night I was sitting there writing everything in. And then of course, you know, you start like I started like some of these projects ages ago. So thankfully, there's two ways I check a project because I always take a photograph when I start something and then as I'm going. So I know I could just go through my photographs till I find where I started, like the shawl maybe, mm -hmm. and then I can write the date in. Or I can go to Ravelry and hope that I put the start date in. Which oh, yeah. Uh, you know. 
sometimes that's kind of why I started a YouTube channel so that I could keep track of things a bit better because I can write things down but I'll end up losing the page or well the Pemberton pull over them and I make them fall out. I actually started April 16th 2021 <gasps> I've done the back and I'm halfway up the front oh so when I saw that I thought oh I better guess my skates on for that one crikey you know how have you been getting on with the Gideon method I'm loving it. It's really working good. The only problem with the Gideon method is doesn't allow for new cast ons. And so this has been a new cast on since I started my six Gideon method and um, the muscle burr that I cast on day before yesterday isn't, you know, and of course I get obsessed with something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, this at least is my carnating. So this will you know, and I want to try to get this finished for him before winter's done. But, um, you know, now that I've got, and Bob's picked up some new needles for me, the 16 inch um, circulars for the muscle bra hat. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it'll go quicker, but I want to work on them. Yeah. So for the last two nights, I haven't worked on my Gideon. I've been working on these or putting squares in my bloody blank, Midas square blanket. It's like, okay, stop. Go back to the, go back to what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be working on this. That's, yeah, I did try it. And that's the reason why I haven't had any serious keeping up with it because of, yeah, picking up and something and just being and obsessed. I think the reason is because like with the one I, the, 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 the thing I'm working on now, like when I did my uh, socks and I got them finished, it was, oh, I'm going to finish these, these, you know, so they got finished. The, the chicken, I can make the chicken in the 12 hours. So the chicken got finished. The next in the rotation is my favorite blanket. Well, there are so many stitches on it. It's so heavy. As much as I love the yarn I'm using for it and the colors, it's just so heavy on me and it's just knitting. Mm, yeah, and yeah. I don't feel like, you know, I could spend three hours on it and I've done four, five rows. Yeah, well, I have I, the same issue with a rug that I'm working on. I know, so it's I kind so of feel heavy. like, yeah, it's like, whereas the next on the rotation will be the Pemberton pullover. Well, that gets interesting because it's got patterns in it and decreases and you know you feel mm. like you're moving somewhere with that one just this blanket just seems to be taking forever and I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere because I'm still not even close to doing any decreases yet oh gosh you know so it's just I just I just have to get over it I just have to sit there one night and pull it out and work on it you know I keep telling myself that as well <laughs> on certain projects I know I'll get there. Yeah. and then what am I doing after that oh and then it's supposed to be the Stephen Marshall after that which is that Geogradient yeah ah so how I'm, far off are you I, I know I'm what you would call section three I'm on section three and I'm um I've done one of the whole wings and I'm halfway up the other. Well, that'll be an easy one because again, that's now I'm decreasing. Yes. So oh. I feel like once I get back into that, I feel like in those 12 hours, I can probably finish that wing span. Then mm. it gets away again, right? And then yeah. when I do get that out on its next rotation, I want to, um, I think I'm going to crochet the final one. That was going to be my next question. Were you going to do the dip stitch or no. are you going to do something um, else? And yeah. again, because, and I think this is why I love soft knitting so much. Um, there's not as many stitches on the needle. Mm. Mm. I have mm -hmm. a hard time lately, and I, I don't know if it's my hands hurt, because I do have arthritis in my thumb, but when I have a lot of stitches on the needle, I just get bored. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because as you say, you're not really getting anywhere, right? Well, it doesn't look like you're getting anywhere. No. So even if you put a, a progress keeper in to look and see, well, how much did I do? It's like, mm. oh. yes, mm. <laughs> that's what I thought would help me on my rug. But no, it doesn't help. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. No. Oh, yeah. 
that anyway, but but I do and I am enjoying very much doing the Gideon method. It's definitely um something that I'll try to keep up throughout the whole year. It's definitely working. And I actually in another notebook. <gasps> oh, I do love a notebook. Oh, oh, that's nice. That is nice. I saw this girl on another YouTube channel who did this and I thought this was perfect. So she does this, look. Oh, is that is that nitty natty? No, it was another lady. Hello. So what we do is so here were my goals say for oh look I just <gasps> oh, oh I love that. And um so that was January. So you write in oh. here and I hear your you, so this was my Gideon method of the, the six I picked for the month of January, and these were the okay. I wanted to cast on but hadn't quite but ended up doing then finished objects and then I do cross stitch whips and my quilting and all that so that's my plan for the month of January and then it breaks right. down into weeklies here and I just mm -hmm. put what I think I'm going to work on that week and how it works mm -hmm. and then here's February's so February this changed because I added the chicken, because I'd finished the doll. Hmm. And of course, here's the muscle bro hat, which of course I did cast on. So there we go. <laughs> and oh, all my amazing. others. And then here's how I work out my week and what I've worked on. So this week I did the chicken. I'm working on the My Favorite Blanket. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm working on that right now. Because you don't see, oh, there's the muscle bra hat. I'm not supposed to be working on that till next week. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, that is this week now. That's this week now. Yeah. Oh. But I should be on the Pemberton pullover this week, but I'm not because, of course, I keep putting it off. <laughs> You're so organized, though. That's amazing. I just, I just love messing with right, paper and pens and colors. And inspired me. You've I definitely just, done that. You know, oh, I spend more right. time. Writing we are. Doing Sorry, I said I spend more time writing things down than doing anything. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? Right, we are at the thirty-minute mark. All right, my Hello. dear. Well, this has been lovely chatting. I know. Thank you so much. We'll have to do it again sometime. I've really yeah. enjoyed myself. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and I hope all your viewers enjoy it too. Yes, I hope you've all enjoyed the wonderful tips that Anna's given. I definitely have because I've learned some things, yeah. <laughs> got some ideas. Stop, you're making me blush. Oh. <laughs> right. Well, thank you all for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thank you, Bye. Anne, for joining us. <laughs> Bye. Bye.